Hello, hello, my Star Atlas family. It's me again. I'm back with another video just to keep you updated on what's happening in Star Atlas. It feels like it was just yesterday I did a Star Atlas video. And yet, I'm back again. This time, we're going to be talking about the Town Hall. This is going to be your recap for the Town Hall, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much from AFIA. I got some of these pictures from AFIA. Thank you to the rest of the community. Let's just look at what's going to be talked about this time. Now, the basis of this video is going to be a couple of things. One, patch notes from the new showroom 2.1. We have the minor a ship or uh, the minor ships right or are they really ships you can call one of them like an exosuit one of them is the dow update and of course wreck which is the resource extraction and crafting loop cycle we should be going in fairly soon so that's the major topics for this video let's jump right in guys so the first major thing are the patch notes let's have a look at them and see what they say right um they are slightly lower um Reds, but I'm just going to quickly run through all of them so we can get a general idea. For the general bug fixes, or actually most of them are bug fixes. I'm not going to read all of them. Most of them are bugs, but some of them not fairly new features, for example. So fix an issue where players would launch the game for the first time and hadn't chosen a character, loading any game mode and ending up half underground in the, in the hangar. That's not cool. You don't want new players to be experiencing that. Added ship selection screen to the main menu. Added ship selection and player selection screen in active and loadout. Background music is now persistent throughout all game modes, where uh, the escape pull up menu interaction, fix an issue where jetpack camera would shake while would persisting after entering a ship. Ability to enter, uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> added the ability for clients to see their projectiles when shooting. Fixed session IDs, updated outdoor pad teleportation. In photo mode, they fixed a whole bunch of stuff there. Let's move on to the next one. Ground raising, people might be interested in this. First, an issue where some gates were not counted when passing near the border. Race can now be started by any player with the correct ship and not just the host. Fix an issue where players would fly away from the racetrack after passing a few a uh, few gates. Ground racetrack should support only hover mode now. Awesome, awesome. Fix the UI of the loading screen. For the dogfighting arena, NPC they fixed some issues where the NPC wouldn't give a player the chance to mount a ship, where uh, uh, the ships would blast off into the air when pressing F11, which is supposed to be your respawn. Fix an issue where enemies weren't shooting the player. And for outposts, uh, uh, 30 I was going to say 69, where the map would load would take too long during multiplayer sessions, resulting in players timing out. We extended the timeout period so the, play, the, so the flower hunt game mode could be started. So the flower hunt game mode. What's the flower hunt game mode? What? I hadn't seen that before. Is there a flower hunt game mode? What? Has anyone picked up on that? Let's go ahead and read more. I, I've got to go log in and find out. For the ships, they added a few extra stuff. Animation fixes for the Opal Jet, a few other other things. Floyd Liner 1 lasers wouldn't show when firing. Adjusted sound mixing on several ships. Fixed an issue where the visas wasn't flyable. Interaction volumes on ships with interiors. Updated glass material to avoid flickers and first person. For the characters, they fixed an issue where some players would not be able to print uh, sprint after using the jetpack. And for the uh, air track, um, some of the air track targets that were far from their intended lo location, they fixed some of them. So that's a whole bunch of stuff they'd done for this. I bloody love patch notes. So it's actually good to see the nitty gritty of exactly what they have fixed and what they have addressed every single uh, week or every patch update. The, I love patch updates. The team needs to keep doing them. I think Dominic, Dominic, I suggested this to you before. So thank you very, very much for this list of uh, um, uh, patches. So now let's go on to the next topic, my friends, which were miners. Miners are coming. We knew they were going to be coming for a while, but now they're actually going to be here. I think they'll be starting next Wednesday, give or take. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening next Wednesday. That's what it is. So we've had a small introduction to some of the miners before, but now we get to see them up close and personal. We have the all from the Armstrong um, uh, family, right? The arms family, the Armstrong ship manufacturing line, similar to the v uh, visas or pod, whatever. We have the Armstrong imp, I-M-P. Now I forget what imp stand for. Um, something, uh, I forget what imp stand for. Man, I should know, shouldn't I? What do you guys, what does imp stand for? Anyway, we have the tip, tap, as well as um, the IMP, right? The IMP doesn't have like a nickname attached to it. So what's going to happen for these miners? They're gonna be going on sale. They're gonna be going on sale only 30% of the entire volume of the ships, right? Only 30% of the entire volume of the ships is going to, going to go on sale first. Those will be 50% off. They will be 50% the origination price, not the VWAP price, because VWAP is a is a is a average of all the different prices. But the first price it's going uh, for, it's going to be having a 50% off, right? And I'm sure it'll be both in Atlas as well as USDC. 
Now, the team is only going to release that 30% first up. They're not going to release any more after that until that first 30% is sold or that 30% tranche, right? That first tranche. Now, the minor ships are actually very, very different, guys. So they have a dual purpose. They are self-sufficient. So you can actually do two things with them. You can put them into faction fleet where they will be able to generate Atlas for you, right? Which is score, which is what all the other ships are doing now. They can generate Atlas for you. Or you can use them in the faction claim section where they will be able to generate resources for you because they're miner ships. They will go out and mine for you. So this is the only ship so far that can do these two things. You can't put a ship in the faction claim right now, can you? That's what they're saying. You can do two of these things. Now, um, you have to make a choice. You can only do one or the other. So you can either choose to accumulate Atlas or choose to accumulate resources and let it go and mine for you. Now, that being said, Michael did come across and say something else. We're going to cover it soon. But this is the first one. This is the uh, Armstrong Imp um, uh, tip. This is the tip, which is the small miner. Now, it really, really actually looks like an exosuit, doesn't it? That's what I think. Like, it's pretty cool in itself. Um, it's something that uh, I, like, I myself would have or any of the smaller uh, crews would have. And then when you get two to three to four people, you will have an actual proper miner. And this is what they call the um, the tap. It's a medium miner. And I took these pictures from the gal sheet. So that is a medium minor right let's go on to the large big daddy dog which is the armstrong imp it's a capital minor and it looks furious it looks crazy it looks like something from like like a dreadnought from like a sci-fi series that's crazy man look at this giant bloody minor i want to i want to just like keep watching it for a while and i want to take myself off so you can even see now can i see this yeah look at that that's the whole thing in its glory that's just gorgeous isn't it that is just gorgeous. I'm going to leave it there for one second. I'm going to say it again. It's gorgeous. Now, let's move on. Next Wednesday, what's going to be happening? We are going to be seeing the new statistics of ships that are coming out. This is called the Ship Stats V2, right? Some of the ships we have on the market now, they made when they made these ships, it was a long time ago, nearly two years ago. Some are unfortunately... And this is part of normal game development, right? You have to readjust how things are, are taken in the ecosystem. Something may be super, super OP. Something may be super, super weak. They need to readjust all of that. So don't be scared when some of your ships have now different stats, okay? They will have different stats. And we don't know specifically which stats will be changing, if it's going to be a new weapon or one less weapon or a degrade or a downgrade here or there. We don't know, right? Chip is the one that's uh, um, on point on this. So it, it, we'll have to wait and see. Now, on top of that, also next week, they are saying there are going to be new DAO updates coming soon. So we did have a look at already uh, in the uh, town hall of DAO updates. So we're going to touch on that. The next thing is also Wreck. I... I I didn't quite get if a wreck is going to be coming next Wednesday. The minor ships are going to be coming next Wednesday, but I don't know if a wreck is going to be coming next Wednesday. I don't think so, right? They didn't make that clear. For me, I'm like, we're over the time where you sell NFTs where they don't have a utility yet. Make the utility available, make wreck come out, right? And then people can should go and buy the ships and NFTs. Like they're so close together. Why don't they just put wreck out first? This, uh, this is the thing, There's NFTs, uh, man, I don't know who else has got money right now for extra uh, ships at 50% VWAP off. That's, nah. like we can, they can take a text example from the last um, ship sales, like the Fembo Mamba, and I forget which, whichever ships they were as well. They were kind of buy one, get two of them. Um, and, you know, they could see if they can get any more money like that, but it's difficult, man. But coming back to Wreck, it's actually called Resource Extraction and Crafting. This is where you'll be able to mine your resources or, or use your miner ships that you have just bought, right, to go and get R20. Now, R20 is a whole bunch of the different resources in Star Atlas that we haven't seen. We have seen pictures of them. They've changed a little bit so far. But the idea is that hopefully you'll be using your miners to go and mine for your R20. And then using your R20, you can go and craft them into R4. Now, they're also saying you should be able to craft it into other items. We don't know what the other items are so far. Hopefully, maybe weapons. Hopefully, like other forms of material. I don't know. We don't know. We're going to wait and find out. Maybe next Wednesday when all of this comes out. Now, 
Just a little clarification by Michael Wagner. He did say this. I think it's very important to know. Just a little clarification. The IMP line will maintain their dual functionality even after Sage release. Should the owner prefer to use them in faction or a uh, faction fleet or claims? So we're talking about how you can use it in both ways, right? You can go and you can put it in a score to earn Atlas, or you can put it in the claim section to go and uh, earn R4 resources. So they're saying you can still do that even after Sage releases. Sure. But when Sage releases, the faction fleet score is diminishing, isn't it? The faction fleet is going away, isn't it? So I don't know. I just I just caught on that now. Separately, something I didn't cover on the call, but will be released with details next week. So I'm assuming Wednesday as well. We're getting a whole bunch of information next Wednesday. Is that these ships do not have any weapons or form of defense, but they do highly specialize in mining. So their function in Sage will differ from their current form. What does that mean? That means these ships are going to be very, very weak if you decide to put them out. You might not even be able to put them out. They have one function, to go and mine resources for you, okay? All of the ships we have now are all the same sort of ship. They're, they're either a fighter or a bomber or something. We don't have any minor classes, right? So in Sage, you'll be able to just fly around with your ship to go and capture whatever. With these miners, it's very likely you won't be able to do that. That's what he's saying. They don't have any weapons. They don't have any defenses. They're useless apart from mining. They have a specific purpose. So you got to really factor that into it, okay? If you if you buy a miner, you probably need to have a ship to take the miner to a location for it to mine for you. Like, this this is what you got to think about, okay? If you're going to buy one of these. Now, let's take a small break. Let's look at some pictures of some uh, uh, weapons that uh, uh, Dominic provided us to us. So I think one of them was a Fimble um, Energy weapon, I think it was called, and which looks pretty cool. It looks like a, a Tri-Gatling gun. I like it so far. And then we have a uh, um, an Opal energy weapon, an Opal energy weapon. Now, it was confirmed that these are actually hard point weapons. They're not FPS weapons. They're going to be sitting on top of your ships, right? Similar to how we see the PS weapons right now. We'll be seeing the Opal weapons very, very soon. Um, Opal as well as Fimble. So this is definitely going to go on like a um, a Fimble, uni uh, maybe a Unibomber, maybe a, a Fimble a BIOS pack light looks like a pack light kind of weapon. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm going to be going quicker for the Dow. Dow as well. We should be getting uh, some information next Wednesday. Uh, the gist of it is that there is a new legal entity that we should know about. It's called the Star Atlas Foundation. The Star Atlas Foundation's role is to be the physical kind of group that actually goes and signs contract on behalf of whatever the DAO dec decides to do. Like if the DAO says, oh, we need to go sign a contract with this new artist or whatever to make a, to make this for us. Who's going to sign that? The DAO? Who is the DAO? Oh, well, they're all across the world. Okay, well, that guy lives in... America. Who's in America? Like, no, not really. So you need a functional entity somewhere who's going to go and sign this contract with this whoever it is, right? Uh, they're saying the DAO is not the final form now. It is a good start to what they want to propose. Um, it, uh, at the end, they want it to be all automated, right? So th there shouldn't be any leeway. <coughs> Excuse me. They also want it to be kind of fully decentralized. Now, decentralization is actually a spectrum, right? Um, you go from slightly central, uh, centralized to slightly all the way to mildly decentralized then to fully decentralized. Like Bitcoin is like probably the full, fulliest decentralized out there. So they're saying, you know, I, I always have the opinion that you start out in the centralized fashion. So right now, if Automata goes away, no one else is really going to be developing Star Atlas, is there? Let's be honest, there's no one else. So it's kind of like centralized, let's be honest. Um, and then you go across where you introduce a DAO, where lots of people have PvP voting power, and they're able to make decisions. And then it's not just Automata, it's a whole bunch of people with voting rights as well. But uh, still, keep in mind how much Polis or PvP does Automata have? Quite a lot. So is it really decentralized? Not yet, right? It's going to get there later. Um, and of course, as I said, they don't want to be the gatekeepers. So they're going to try and put a lot of power into the player's hands. The, um, this, in a nutshell, is the DAO proposal roadmap. You go from declaration, deliberation, decision, and then the democratic convergence. They all have uh, little parts inside there that we can uh, dissect, but I'm just going to leave it there. We're going to get a whole bunch more information next Wednesday. I think there was one PIP that is coming up soon. Now, I think Signal also has a community proposal called PIPX or something. I got to go and read up on that. I did see it a couple of times on a hologram news network, but I, I didn't cover it. I should cover it for you guys. Um, so PIP1, uh, this is the first Apollos improvement proposal that we should be getting, right? 
What's it going to include? Number one, ratification of the Starless DAO, which is the decentralized autonomous organization that makes decisions affecting critical aspects of Star Atlas Metaverse. Number two, ratification of the Starless Constitution, which describes the permissions, processes, and overall framework of the DAO. And three, ratification of the operations of Star Atlas Foundation, independent legal entity protecting certain elements of Star Atlas DAO. We need this PIP1. This is the setting the foundation. How are you going to propose things? Who, who go, who's who? What's what? What budgets do they have? This is the sort of stuff that you'll find in the constitution. Now, there was a very small video. Um, so I think let's take a small second and let's just watch it, shall we? So we're going to have all kinds of information. We'll delve into some of this uh, for you guys. But basically what you're going to see is you're going to see this new authentication flow for the comments section. So, so that's the doubt. Proposal discussion area. You're going to see the um, authorized wallet button. So first off, you're going to have to sign a transaction, right? To Just to say, it, uh, this is actually my wallet. I own non, it. This is not a blockchain transaction. This is a blockchain signature. So this is not actually being broadcast to Solana. You don't need a uh, any gas or anything like that to do this. This is just basically a wallet signature that we're using to authorize yeah. and make sure. This way, we get to see who, who's Once making comments. Authorization, you'll be able to take and a bunch of different steps. They actually the are in that account. Comments, you'll be able to reply to other people's comments. Um, uh, there's a report button, edit functionality, and we're also going to have something that's called endorsement. Now, what the endorsement does, everywhere in this app, you're going to see people's PVP, like the proposal author, the comment author, everywhere that you see somebody's uh, pub key address, you're going to know how much PVP they have. Because ultimately, we want to know like who's putting their who's who's putting their uh, who's putting their stack behind it, right? And so that's going to be prevalent everywhere. So you can respond to other people's comments, you can endorse their comments, and basically we're going to use all of that stuff as signaling to figure out what is the most important and what's the most supported uh, uh, comments and, and, and so forth. And what we have... And let's leave it there, there, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to watch the entire thing, just go ahead and go to the AFIA um, YouTube. I'm actually going to put it in the description. You can go and watch the entire town hall or just this small snippet about the DAO. Now, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, point on something here this is what it's going to look like when people are voting this is just a community gauge right so at the bottom is the community interest so this is the community pvp this is how much me you and someone else has not automata so automata or someone could put up a proposal right and in this proposal i don't know exactly what they're saying but this is the total pvp count this is of all the polis in existence that are actually uh, are being staked we have 0.93 percent of people that are involved in this one proposal right but in all of that how much is actually the community how much is me you which is 9.3 percent the rest of it is automata themselves that was a small caveat i thought i should just tell you guys about now that's going to leave it there that is the rest um, of the show that is the uh patch notes that we covered i think they were the highlight of my time i'm going to be waiting for next week until the dow does come out so we can make more videos about it don't worry i i will cover it fully because i'll be showing you how to go in how to make a first propose how to make a comment on a proposal how to go and vote how to do everything on there so it's just wednesday we'll cover it later so that's that's it for now, guys. Thank you very much to Athia. Thank you to everyone in the community. It's been a good town hall. I don't mind it that they are kind of uh, announcing it without a lot of time for preparation, but that's okay. It's not too bad. We still got good information out of it. Now, if you do like the content I do, it took me like an hour to put all of this together, to watch the entire thing, uh, to distill what I think you guys need to know. Please do consider voting, uh, voting for me, <laughs> donating to me. My wallet address is itsme.sol. It's going to my arcade. Even though I already have an arc, I'm still building a nice treasury of funds for my 200th episode so I can give away a whole bunch of prizes. That's what I'll be doing. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to leave you and love you. Ciao for now.